I'm a theorist, we write down our equations. You know, and that equation, this is the equation come to life. This is what, this, this is what I love about it. This, this is an equation come to life. This is not just, you know, a bit of differentiation, a few Greek symbols. This is those equations in reality. This could be, this could reveal extra dimensions. This could reveal supersymmetry. This could reveal, you know, the origin of dark matter. You know, this machine, it's not just an equation that I've written down on a piece of paper anymore. This is, this is it. This is really looking for stuff. This is, this is incredible. We we're just about to go into Atlas. Um, but just before we go in, we can see there's this, this big mural on the outside. I quite like it, actually. I think, I think it's pretty good. I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's not the... Because it, he stood just, just there. <laughs> no, because no. no, we were arguing about this yesterday, Brady, and I, and I said I thought it was... Uh, I quite liked it. It's, Don't uh, say that, because then he'll know I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing uh, that, of interest that we, 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 we can see here, in the background, you see those big tubes? They contain helium. Uh, and that's the helium that gets used to cool down the the superconductors and then the, the magnets. Yeah, so, so this, is the, this is the main control room here at, at Atlas. Normally this would be very busy, but of course we're on shutdown at the moment, but one of the important people that's still here is, the, is that lady over there with the green cardigan, who's the, the safety person. So she's making sure that nothing goes belly up while we're down there. And, and also, so she's basically the most important person here. And again. So we had to stop digging somewhere up here and hold the walls in the cable. Class act. Let's see what happens here. That's right. Steve? Yeah? Could you please close the mud? Maybe there. <laughs> It's enormous. <laughs> it really is enormous. What do you think? I think it's incredible. It's just the sheer scale of it is just what, what hits you first time. I mean, it really is huge. I mean, that's 30 metres across, apparently, but I don't think that does it justice, you know, when you're actually here and you can see how truly big it is. I mean, it's, it's vast. You know, and it's kind of, I think it's crazy if you think that, you know, it's so big. And yet we're looking at something so small, and it's, it's, the, it's the sort of paradox of the whole thing. But you, of course you need that. Those things are incredible. A typical collision produces many hundreds of particles, and each component of the Atlas detector is necessary to build a full picture of the collision. This is where the collisions are taking place, or one of the places where the collisions are taking place uh, along the LHC. And you'll, you'll see up here, if I just look at that, that blue bit, that where that blue encasement is, that's where the beam is. The protons are coming in from this side, and then they meet protons coming from the other side, and they collide right in the middle of that, that big detector. So it, that's where all the stuff's going on in, inside there. So the bit that we see here is called the, uh, the muon spectrometer. To actually see what's going on inside the detector, we'd have to move this out. We'd literally have to pull this out, and they do do that. I've just been told that they do do that. Then you've got sort of some magnets behind that, and then you literally have to pull another wheel out, and then you've got access to all the color calorimeters. For example, the electromagnetic calorimeter, the hadron cal calorimeter, and then within that, you've got the, the inner detector and the pipe itself. So literally, it's, it's deep within that is where, all, where it's all going on, where it's all kicking off. Well, no, we're, 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 this, is, this is where a lot of the information, you know, we learn about a lot of the information in precisely this part. This is where the muons the muons are, uh, are coming through. This is, we learn an awful lot from, from the, what the muons are doing. In particular, if you look at these sort of these triggers here, this is all these, you know, the sort of copper-coloured parts. Those are the triggers. You know, they can detect the position of these muons down to, you know, the, the timing of the, of the muon passing by down to an accuracy of a nanosecond. So these are all these are remarkably accurately telling us where and when these muons are passing through. As a muon passes through these tubes, it leaves a trail of electrically charged ions and electrons which drift to the sides and center of the tube. What's, what's special is, is how the muon's behaving. If the muon, you know, has it perhaps lost a little bit, a little bit less energy than you might have thought, and all the energies don't add up. And then, you know, you've got a lot of these muons, you've got a lot of these different events going on. You add up the energies and say, let's say you've got some missing energy. Well, that would tell you something. That would tell you that maybe, where's that energy gone? Maybe the energy's escaped into an extra dimension. Maybe you've produced a, 
a dark matter particle. There's various things that that could mean, and that's uh, so you learn an awful lot just by adding up all these little bits. So actually, the Higgs event that was that we think may have happened just before Christmas, that actually ha would have not got out this far, okay? Because what that was was a Higgs decaying into into two photons. Those photons would have been absorbed by the electromagnetic calorimeter, which is right in the centre of all that. It's the it's the first calorimeter outside the inner detector. So, uh, you know, they would have been absorbed at that stage. They would have been given a little glow, you know, and essentially they would have been spotted at, at that point. So there would have been, you know, I mean, there would have been stuff coming out, but it, it's not the stuff that we would have been interested in at that stage. So, Tony, if the Higgs event can be detected deep within, why do you need this muon detector all the way out here? Because you need knowledge of, of, the, of the entire event, of everything that's going on. I mean, you know, in any, in any one collision, you know, there's, there's an awful lot of stuff happening, right? So. You've got, okay, you will have muons flying out, but well, that's not the stuff you're interested in. You have to know the full picture to know what's going on deep inside. That's the important thing. So we're in a really noisy bit now, as you can probably tell. I'm having to, to shout because that thing's making a racket. But, you know, it really makes you feel like you're really in the heart of, the, of this machine now. I mean, of course, where, where we're stood now, you wouldn't be able to stand when this thing's on. Too much radiation flying around, too many particles that could do you, you know, some serious damage. So obviously, and apparently these walls are seven meters thick, so, you know, this is really all well encased. I just want to talk about the, 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 you know, the pipe itself and what's going on in there. You've basically got protons whizzing around at nearly the speed of light. You know, they're doing that circuit of the, of the, um, of the collider 11,000 times a second, you know? And it, you know, they do that for about half a day, and in that time, they would have traveled almost to the, to the distance of Neptune. So, I mean, this, you know, they really get, they're really bombing it and they're, you know, they're, they're only carrying, each one is only carrying the energy of a mosquito in flight, which doesn't sound that impressive. So, you know, we're, we're building all this sort of, this great big kit and, you know, we're, we're making these, um, these protons sort of giving them the energy of a mosquito. But I guess that might not sound impressive, but you think about how small the, the proton is, right? That, that's what's interesting. I mean, if I, if I clap my hands, right? There's more energy in that collision than in any given collision up there, okay? But, of course, it's occurring over a much larger region of space. Now, just to see how that makes a difference when you shrink things down, you know, if I had a needle attached to there, then I would think twice about hitting that so hard. So that sort of emphasizes the point that, you know, squeezing things down makes a real difference. I mean, I mean this beam, right, it's coming round, it's about, a centimetre thick, right? And then when it cut, when you get to this point where it's it's gonna it's gonna hit the chamber, it's gonna it's it's basically gonna collide. They need to squeeze that beam right, right down, right, right down, down to a hair's breadth, and then you get this collision. Okay. Now you've got in each bunch you've got about ten to the eleven protons. Okay. And yet in any given collision event, only about twenty of those actually collide. What happens to the rest of them? Well, they they just carry on. No worries, they just carry on. Obviously, that's the vast majority, right? Do so you think, in fact, this is one of the remarkable things. You've got these, each collision, 10 to the 11 protons, 20 of them actually involved in, in, in an actual event. And then, of those events, most of them are thrown away. As I say, you know, we talk about a billion events per second. We're only interested, in, we only keep data about 100 of those, okay? Because most of them are stuff we know about, stuff we're not that interested in. So literally, 20 out of 10 to the 11 uh, actually do something interesting. And then out of those, we bin off the vast majority as well. So actually, the ones that are actually going to give you, say, a Higgs event, it's sort of, you know, literally, it's like winning the lottery. They're so unlikely. What happens to the other protons after the ones that miss out on the collision? Well, they go around again. And they go around again. And they go around again. And of course, most of the protons will never get a chance to be involved in a, will never be involved in a collision. Most of them won't be. But, uh, and then eventually, after about half a day, they decide to dump the beam. And they basically just get, go to a beam dump and they just smash the beam into, you know, essentially a wall. And they just dump out the energy. Well, then they, they just they, they generate some new, new protons and start the whole pr procedure again. Those ones are gone. They're done. They're done with. They missed their chance. So we've just we've just taken the elevator up from from the, the basically the ground floor of the of the detector up to this higher bit. So we can actually looking down on the on the beam pipe now. Um, we're at the top of the detector, 
Uh, they told us as well, there's actually an elevator which drops right into the centre of this thing as well. So, uh, so it's not the only elevator. We haven't been in that one, we've been in the, in the service one there that, that we've used. If any of these keys are missing, the LHC cannot switch on. Right, so it's a safety thing essentially. So if I take this back to back to Nottingham with me, the LHC is not going on. <laughs> so uh, it's very important I put this back on the, on the way out. So it's uh, and also it's quite reassuring that I've got it in my hand because that thing ain't going to switch on while I've got this in my hand. So that's good. <laughs> It's, this is it, it's the detector, we're here. And you've got the beam comes in and it goes into this monster. It's noisy, it's, it's like if you've been on a, a, on a ship, on a, you know, across, across the English Channel or something and you're, you're on, you're on the, the hum of the engines constantly, that's what you can hear and you, and you can just see people, I mean you just get an idea of the size of it, there are two people here. And it, I don't know, this, it's, uh, 